Um, we're going to talk about today um, uh, kind of a new topic. Um, it still relates to everything that we've been talking about before because there's some basic principles about human physiology that we need to discuss that um, have come up. So for example, if you remember this week, if you're here, we did some uh, bench press max and we did squat max. And I told you to um, rest upwards of three to four or five minutes before proceeding for your last set for 100%. And I never really explained that fully as to why, because you had this class before. Um, I asked a lot of you why that was and you don't remember. So we're gonna go over this. And this is a very important thing to understand about um, how our body functions and how it relates to movement and exercise. Okay, so the term I wanna to introduce today, which is called energetics, which is basically um, how your body absorbs and uses energy depending on what type of exercise, what kind of movement that you're doing. And a lot of us think about like energy in our body being a single thing or a monolith as what we would call it in, uh, in another context. So the energy in our body, it varies and it varies based on how you consume your food, but most importantly, it varies based on what you're actually doing. And this is very important even for those of you who are, especially for those of you trying to have high levels of uh, athletic performance out on the field, and even for those of you that might be looking to someday lose weight or you know slim your body up, things like that, all of this pertains to both of those types of issues. So we have three systems. We have three energy systems. We have what's called the phosphagen system, and we have the glycogen system, and we have the aerobic system. So these two, the phosphagen system and the glycolytic system, is what we call anaerobic, all right? So those of you that have taken any kind of biology class already in high school may have heard this term before. Most of us know about this one right here, aerobic, which means with oxygen, okay? Aerobic means with oxygen. And the prefix an in English means without. So anaerobic means without oxygen, okay? So the phosphagen system and the glycolytic system, these are both uh, energy systems within our body that involve no oxygen, okay? The aerobic system obviously does involve the movement of oxygen through your bloodstream, okay? So these two um, systems right here, you can often think of them as the more, as we'll talk in a minute, the high intensity and the more muscular driven systems, where these are the more endurance driven systems here. Okay, so to go over that in detail, the glycolytic system, I'm oh, sorry, the phosphagen system is the first one we'll talk about, okay? The two chemicals that are present in the phosphagen system is ATP and ADP. They stand for adenosine triphosphate and adenosine diphosphate. The only difference between the two of them is that the is the number of ions uh, between so three in triphosphate and two in diphosphate. But these two chemicals are released, or enzymes, whatever you want to call it, um, are released in our muscle for very very high intensity exercise. Okay, high intensity movements. And you can only do that for about seven seconds, okay? I'll show you a quick story real quick. I've, when I taught elementary PE all the time, and even sometimes in high school sports, kids will tell me all the time, they can go 100% forever. And I tell them that's impossible. Your body's not built that way, okay? So if this is your 100% here, okay, then if you can only last seven seconds, then clearly you're not going 100% forever. Okay, and I'll have a, then I would have a kid run, and we would all listen to their footsteps in the gym. And it would start off like pop, 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 and then over time, pop, 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 pop. That sound of their footsteps slowing down is a clear indication that they are moving slower. Okay, so as time goes on, you're not able to continue this very high intensity. Okay, which is why. We see the most successful people in history in sports and something like the 100 meter dash, it's under 10 seconds. 
you know, you're, and you're not going to see the speed they travel in a 100 meter dash go for 400 meters because that's impossible. Okay, so ATP, this is the kind of stuff we do for a uh, vertical jump. This is the kind of stuff we do for a squat max, a bench press max, a 100 meter dash, um, throwing a shot put, uh, you know, dunking once, you know, in the, in, after a long resting period or something like that. <clears throat> the next one we're going to talk about is the glycolytic system. This is where most of our sporting movements fall. Okay? The glycolytic system means the energy source is carbohydrates and muscle glycogen that we receive through our diet, and it gets converted into energy through something called the Krebs cycle. Now, you don't need to know that yet. You will need to know that if you ever hope to go on to college because that's part of basic biology. But when we eat carbohydrates, so like when we eat a bowl of pasta, that food is consumed in our body as a carbohydrate. And then inside of our muscle, or sorry, inside of our body after we digest it, it gets placed into the muscle and stored as muscle glycogen. This glyco, which is why from the word glycolysis, glyco is why we call this the glycolytic system. Okay, so these are movements that begin after about that seven second period and extend upwards of about two minutes. Okay, now that depends on how intense, how hard that you go. If you go at a, uh, let's say a very slow jogging pace, okay? Yes, you're gonna be using this, but you're gonna be kicking in the aerobic system much sooner. But if any of us, and myself included, if you were like that kid and you go out for a run, everyone's a all state runner for 20 seconds. Everybody can win a cross country race for 20 seconds, okay? It's after that 20, 30, 40 seconds, maybe even a minute that uh, this we start to lose energy, we start to get burning sensation in our muscles, our lungs start to burn, and that's when we start to slow down, okay? And that's where our glycolytic system is kind of reaching its peak. And that, this 15 to two minute range depends on how good a shape you're in. Okay, so the next one is, ah, this shouldn't be here. So the next um, system that we're gonna talk about is the aerobic system. So again, that is the system that's in the presence of oxygen. So, uh, in the presence of oxygen. So that the, uh, let me pause this real quick. Okay, sorry about that. For the aerobic system, my, my text went off the page. So the aerobic system is a combination of a slow drip of glycolic or glycolytic energy coming out of your body and picking up that delivery of the energy systems through oxygen. Okay, these are moments that are in that, you know, two minutes and maybe even an hour and 20 minutes. Yes, people exercise nonstop, like run and stuff for an hour and 20 minutes. That's very common. <clears throat> and this is very low intensity. Okay, um, if you've able, if you've ever been able to run a mile without your legs burning, without having to stop and walk, you're using that aerobic system. And even probably right now, you're sitting down. I'm sitting down. I'm using my aerobic system because I'm not using very much. I'm not being very active. So this is a low, kind of bleeding out of our muscle glycogen, which is within our body. So some of you may be wondering, where was fat as an energy source? Well, fat is an energy source, okay? <clears throat> it is not a, a very good one. And one way I like to kind of explain um, the energy, sorry, the, hold on just a second. One way I like to explain the, um, the fat system is that fat is like, sorry, phosphagen, just spread this up. The phosphagen system is kind of like rocket fuel. So when you need to go really, really intense, really, really hard, and complete something that's very, very difficult, you want to use your rocket fuel. But as we know, if we think about a rocket flying through space, it doesn't last very long, which is why we're at that five-second stage. And then we have our muscle glycogen that kicks in, okay? And that can boost us a little more, but we're not going to go quite as intense at that point. And then we're slowly bleeding 
our glycogen and into this aerobic system. So fat, if, if fat is the opposite of the phosphagen system, if the phosphagen system is rocket fuel, fat is like running a Ferrari with a coal furnace in the back of the car. Okay? It wouldn't be very efficient and it would not get you to go very fast. Okay? So fat is a fuel source, but it's a very crappy fuel source. So again, this, this aerobic system is a very slow exhaustion of the muscle glycogen within your system. And fatty acids as a fuel source really don't occur to about the 90 minute point. Okay? And the reason I bring this up is because if you go to <clears throat> any kind of like fitness gym, like, a, like the Doyle or something, and maybe even our, tre I don't even know, the treadmills we have, often you'll see on some kind of like exercise bike or on a treadmill, it'll say, the fat burning zone. And the fat burning zone they have is like a slow jog, okay? So, you know, people get on there and they, they dial the speed to fat burning and they're running and they're thinking, yeah, man, I'm burning fat. No, because if you're only running for like 20, 30 minutes, you're not burning fat, okay? You're mu burning muscle glycogen and you're just starting to burn a little bit of fat when you're at like maybe an hour. And it's not to like 90 minutes, which is right here in our timeline we start to burn fat. And at that point, if you're burning fat, you feel lethargic, you feel like you can't move very fast, you feel dizzy, maybe like you're gonna pass out. That's what having fat as a fuel source feels like. Okay, so moving on. 